Now for more, we're joined by the global CEO of AMREF Health Africa, that is Gitan G. Gitahi in uh, Nairobi, Kenya. And uh, thanks so much for being with us. First of all, just give us a brief idea of how serious the overall COVID situation is for the continent and what's the trajectory? Well, thanks, Michael. Uh, it's uh, it's a, a kind of a very devastating um, uh, wave, you know, and uh, it is, we know very well that the third wave is actually worse than the second that we had. Uh, in many ways, number one is that it's accelerating faster. Number two is that it is, um, you know, creating more severe disease and also with more young people involved. And, and that has resulted in a rapid rise in death um, and cases as well. And uh, it, it's not looking good. And it's looking like unless we can vaccinate fast enough, this is going to continue. So, so one study in the journal The Lancet found, you know, and, and this is sort of to what you're saying there, found that those who suffer from COVID or severe COVID in Africa are more likely to die than patients in other parts of the world because of uh, issues with things like equipment, supplies, healthcare infrastructure. What, what are the immediate needs? I mean, things like oxygen supplies, ventilators, hospital capacity, that sort of thing? Well, I think, you know, the, the, the fact is that the COVID pandemic has come to Africa at a time when we already have a suboptimal health system. And that has, you know, many things around it. And uh, the least of, you know, one of them is, is actually financing. If you look at investments in health, the public expenditure in health in Europe, it is $4,000 per, per capita. In Africa, it ranges anywhere between 10 and $30 per capita. That already tells you that the health system is completely suboptimal. And when you get a pandemic like this, then you would expect that the care needed for the, you know, from the health system, resilient care to take mm. care of a surge is not there at all, which means that if you're sick in Africa, you're more likely to die of COVID. And it is the same for other diseases. You're more likely to die uh, of severe disease in Africa than you are in, in, uh, you know, across the, con the continent. Mm. So you, right now we're having challenges with oxygen, ICU beds and critical care staff. This is really the issue. Right, right. Now, it, it's in the US and, and some other places, the vaccine doses have literally been discarded because of a lack of demand. They have far more than they need. One study said that by the end of August, uh, rich nations will have nearly two billion more doses than they need. What, what do Africans think when they hear that? Do they feel abandoned or forgotten by the rich nations? Exactly. And, and, and also the feeling that you can never rely on uh, any other country or any other nation or any other geography for your own security or health security. And Africans now feel that uh, the trust gap that has existed between the people and the rich nations is going to continue to increase. If we have almost 11 billion doses being produced by end of this year, and only 900 million of them are available for purchase, and most of those are from China, meaning that all the vaccines developed in the rich nations are not available for purchase by African countries. So this is actually a catastrophic moral failure. That's how we feel. And because people are dying every day, this is why I say a vaccine delayed is a vaccine denied. It's not about getting vaccines in the future. It's about rich countries releasing the doses that they have actually out of greed booked and releasing them to ensure yeah. they're available for people in Africa. Yeah, I mean, here in the state of Georgia, where I am, they literally threw out doses the other day because they were they they didn't have the demand for it. With with the low vaccination rate overall, particularly fully vaccinated uh, Africans, what what is the outlook then for vaccine doses to get to uh, African nations in the necessary amount? And 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 why is it so difficult to get? Is Covax working? Covax is working. But COVAX has been met by the brutal immoral force of rich nations. I think what happened is COVAX had actually a, a supply pipeline. And this supply pipeline was dependent on the production capacity of the world. And now if you go around and you, you, know, you have bread in the village and then you own the baker and you say now all the bread has to come to your house, then the rest of the village is hungry. This is the issue here, that COVAX is working. COVAX is a mechanism. It's not a production uh, pipeline. It's a mechanism for collecting doses and supplying them to poor nations. So COVAX is working, but the supply pipeline needs to be released by the rich nation. This is the issue. So Africa is looking at COVAX continuously. It's also looking at Africa Union through the, the Africa Vaccine uh, task, uh, task Team. And we are actually now in many countries purchasing through the Africa right. Union. Uh, but this needs to be accelerated. We need to accelerate to save lives.
And, and of course, as we've said many times, rich nations will bear the brunt of, uh, of, uh, of uh, variants that emerge in places that, uh, where, where there is rampant spread. So it, it is a global issue. We've got to leave it there, unfortunately. Uh, Githinji Gatahi, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Michael. Thank you very much.